with Rudy Tomjanovich in 1977 when he punched Rudy Tomjanovich, and he was vilified. Okay, he was vilified that year, but he was vilified for a long, long time, way too long. That was just unnecessary. I wanted to find out what type of person he was. Was he that person that threw that punch? And I found out that he wasn't. It was a moment in time. I have him on now, which I am honored to have on. I am honored to have former NBA player Kermit Washington on. I'm really excited to have you on. And before we get into anything, I just want to say how much I I watched your feature and I really love the charity work you did. That really touched me. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you. Uh, I want to uh, kind of go down memory lane. First, what about the Warriors winning the championship? What was your opinion? Because that Jerry West is your former coach. Well, a former coach and a former teammate. That shows you how teammate, I was. yes. <laughs> I was a teammate for two and a half years. I was his teammate for two and a half years, and then he became my coach in the next year. Um, and, you know, his, his first year of coaching ever, um, we had the best record in the NBA that year with the Lakers. So, But we didn't, we didn't win the championship. But um, he was a very good coach, very tough. One of the tougher coaches you'd be around. I mean, when I say tough, not ones that scream or yell, but he would just make you work. I mean, in practice, you had to do – I mean, you were in shape. Let's just say that. You you came to the games in shape with your, Jerry West was your coach. Definitely. Now I want to go down memory lane before we get into your Laker years. You averaged twenty points and twenty rebounds one year in college. No, I did it for my whole career. Your whole career in college. Oh my gosh! Yes, yeah, I did not know that. For three years. Well, wow, at American is, is University. That, American University. Well, America doesn't play the teams that, that we used to play back. That's 40-some years ago. But my, we beat Syracuse, St. Saint, Saint John's, Georgetown, Virginia Tech. Ooh. We beat them all back then. But they changed They changed to two different conferences. When I played, we were middle Atlantic, I think, with LaSalle Temple, St. Joe's, um, Drexel, uh, ourselves. And, but we played some really good teams. But as time went on, um, well, here's the thing. Coach Young was my coach, and he was at, he went on to Rutgers, and they went to the Final Four. But because um, our gym wasn't big enough, um, all the coaches would come and they would leave. I mean, just like Gary Wade wow. who won the championship at Maryland. He coached at America University, um, but they just couldn't pay those coaches. But the problem was George, we always beat Georgetown and George Washington in the local schools. Then Maryland would never play us, but – the thing is, is that you just couldn't see the coaches. So the coaches would do well at American, and then they would move on to better places. So um, we just didn't build a bigger gym. We should have. And I, I think it was Capital Center or whatever downtown. Capital and then Center, George yeah. Cal- they, George left, they left the field house to move to the Capital Center. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the thing is, is that um, Georgetown with John Thompson, and I've known John Thompson since for, oh, my gosh, almost – over 50, oh, 50 years. I mean, really? John Tom, the big John, big John. Yeah, the he used to come yeah, to the playgrounds. The playgrounds. Wow. That's like I tell people in D.C., 10 of us who used to play together on the playgrounds made the NBA. It'll never happen again, but those days are over, just like in New York. You don't play like that with AAU taking over and, and different things, the way society mm-hmm. has changed. Um, it'll never happen again. But D.C. was, I would say, maybe third best city to get the NBA players, get the best players out of the city years ago. And it's a small city compared to New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, and teams like, and cities like that. Well, I understand because my best friend lives in D.C., and he always tells me about the competition there. And now, you're in, now you get drafted by the Lakers. You're in Hollywood, and I want to talk about the 1977 season. You had the best work in the NBA. You're actually on a collision course to run into Dr. J, who was – this was his first year from the ABA. You're on a collision course to play the 76ers, and then the incident happened with Rudy Tonjavis. I want you to kind of tell my audience. I want it from your perspective of, of what happened. Well, you have to realize back in those days, uh, this is 77, the game was slower, so it was much yeah. more aggressive. And you had a lot of tough, tough guys. I mean, you really did. I mean, if you got in a fight back then, it was a $50 fine. That's it. 
That's all wow. it was. And and people don't realize it. And I in my book, and I, you'll talk about that later. It tells about yes, the year are. before I was in Buffalo, in Buffalo, and the whole team jumped me in Buffalo. I got in a scuffle with John Shoemate. And Fred Foster hit me in my head. Don Adams jumped on me. The team jumped on me. And uh, it was all full for I mean, it was just an all-out brawl. But, see, that's what it was in those days. But, see, if you weren't aggressive, you didn't make it back then. You had to be well, aggressive. Were, well, before you, I get into the answer, that, I, just, I hate to cut you off. But there was a practice where you were really physical with Kareem, and Kareem left the practice. Did that happen? Well, yeah, that did happen. But here's the thing: Kareem was we. Kareem and I got along really well, and maybe he wasn't having a good day. <laughs> I don't know, but um, we, we don't know. But Kareem was a great practice player. I mean, he was an ultimate professional all the time. But I think because we were be, we were playing we were playing aggressive. Let's say that, and I think he got upset and he just walked off practice, went on up the stairs, and went home. So that, that's wow. true. I have to remember that. I haven't thought about that for 20 or 30 years. But Kareem, Listen, man, Kareem was I'm, everything I'm a basketball was. junkie. Well, now, let's get back to the incident now. Uh, you're, you're, you're protecting your teammate. Kevin Kernan, you guys got tangled up. And Alice, uh, Rudy T, is running full speed at you. And you're not really – you kind of look at the last minute. Then tell Lawrence what happened. Well, here's the thing. It was, it was a rebound with, it was me, Kareem, and Kevin Cooner. And the rebound went up, and somebody got it, and a fast break started. I put my arm around um, Kevin Kunich to propel myself down the court to get it, and he elbows me in the, in the face. And I really thought he had done it by accident. And so when he turned around, he hit me in my face again. He's a seven-footer. And then yeah. I said, okay, that, that he didn't do that by accident. So we got in a scuffle. And then as the scuffle's being broken up, I didn't even know who Rudy was, to be honest with you. I had to check Moses Malone all the time. And, and sometimes I just, I, you know what, you don't even know. You just say, i got to check Moses. I, I'm not thinking. I knew who Rudy Tom Jonovis' name was, but I knew nothing more about him like that. And so when I saw him running at me, I turned and I swung. And it was just like that couple the year before when the whole team jumped on me. I, I didn't know. But, you know, the thing is, Rudy, Tom Jonovich, and I are Facebook friends. When we do talk to each other, we, we speak, we get along. I told him, you know, I didn't know. He's a great guy. But you don't know that. Yeah. Just like the situation with these police all the time shooting everybody, they feel threatened, and they, they misinterpret, that's a better word, um, the intentions of, of people that are yeah. coming at them. So that's what happened. And so – it's unfortunate because I think I would have been with L.A. when they won the championship with Magic and all those guys that if I hadn't um, next, had that incident. That's my next question. Say that again? Your skill set, that's my next question. Your skill set would have fit perfect with Magic and Kareem and Worthy, which you at the top for the way you ran the floor, and Nixon and then Scott. I think that, unfortunately, I think you would have plugged right into what uh, Pat Riley would have done. And Pat Riley, I think, believe, would have really loved you with your physical play. Well, Pat Riley was my teammate, too. <laughs> That's right. My teammate with the Lakers. See, you're going way back. See, people don't realize that, you know, I'm almost 66. And so, I, you know, in, you know what? Because they had Rambus there or A.C. Green, yes, I could have done what they, they did. But I was only, here's the thing. I tell people, I was... With, after, if you take out the first couple of years when I had to sit on the bench, I was like a 10.10 rebound guy. That's all I was. It was not, I was nothing special. I was always in good shape, though, very, very good shape, yeah, and I played, good, strong, I played yeah. good defense. Yeah. Well, you know what, that, that, uh, you know, that's, uh, you, know, you just have to be strong back then. The game now, mm. you can be fast. I mean, the game now is, deals with quickness. And that's why Petrulia, I, I mean, I hate to say this, in the game last night, I said, why do they put him in the game? The center you for read um, my Golden mind. State, Petrulia. Oh, he, he uh, just, I, to I, me, I've been he's saying not, that for weeks. I said, I was screaming at the TV, please take him out. I mean, he was, to, he's just not fast enough. And I don't know why they didn't play McGee. I was like, why is it McGee in the game? He can run the court. But you know what? Uh, Cleveland doesn't really have a center, but they don't really need a center. They no. just need somebody who can get up and down the court because they're running 
team too. And and here's the thing. I don't mean to change the subject, but everybody said um, it's LeBron against five. Hey, Kyrie Irving, in my opinion, is the top ten player in the league. Yeah, I, 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 I'm yes. telling you, the top ten in the league. And they say so. I'm saying, well, Golden State has two of the top ten, and Cleveland has two of the top ten. But then and, and Golden State has a few well. more. Yeah, oh yeah, love. And love is top. I would say top twenty. 25 in the league. So, you know, they, it, it, so I, I don't know what they're talking about. It's LeBron. Well, if you look at the stats, Kyrie averaged almost as much as, as LeBron did in that, in the games. It, it was a great game. I, I mean, you're looking at talent. I mean, you're looking at some unbelievable plays, play after play after play yesterday. Just incredible. Yes. Just incredible game. Yes. Definitely. And then uh, getting back to you. you, you were vilified way too long. I mean, it was an incident. I thought it was way too unfair. One thing, if you get the suspension, then it should be over with, but you are never allowed to live your life without that being played. But you had a really good friend in Pete Newell. Explain to my audience about him. Well, Pete Newell is the guy, he was the general manager of the Lakers who drafted me in 1973. I was the fifth player picked out of college. Um and he drafted me. I was a fifth player pick. But when they drafted me, they told me, um, we don't need you to play right a- immediately. We just need you to learn. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when, you, when you're when you very young, you think, I'm going to play. I'm going to play. Uh, you know, I'm going to get a lot of playing time. But, no, that's not true. The difference was I was a center in college, a six-foot-eight center. But I went to pros. They put me at the forward position. And that's facing the mm-hmm. bucket as opposed to having – you're back to the bucket. Bucket. That's just like all of a sudden putting Tristan, Tristan Thompson out as a wing. I mean, he doesn't know how to play that. I'm not saying he can't play that, but he has to learn. And so yeah. I sat on the bench for the first two and a half years, and I kept saying, um, please, somebody work with me. But we had two really good coaches. We had um, Bill Sharman and John Barnhill, but they were point guards. And the point guards, I kept asking them to work with me, but they didn't know how to work with me. But I knew that Pete Newell, who was the general manager, was a very good college coach. And so I would go up to him for the first couple of years and say, Pete, can you work with me? He says, I can't because it'll, it'll, make, it'll look bad me working with you when we have coaches down there that's supposed to have the ability to work with you. I said, but Pete, they don't know how to work with me. I want to get off the bench. Well, the third year, after my third year, he retired. And he said, Kermit, mm. now I can work with you. And so I used to pick him up at 7 o'clock in the morning, and we would go to Lyell or Marymount, and we would practice for like two or three hours, and he would kill me. I mean, but he would show me the fundamentals. I mean, the fundamentals of how to play the forward position. And he told me if I worked hard and listened, I would become a very good – I mean, I never became a very good player, but he says you'll become a player that plays a lot in the NBA. And so hmm. for, I was with him for I don't know how many years, but uh, it was me by myself at first, and then he brought in a couple of other players. But then his camp became the number one camp in the world. It will never be another camp like that again, ever. No. Because you had, what, no. seven, or, seven or eight Hall of Famers, future Hall of Famers come there, and when they were young, and participate. It was unbelievable. I mean, you yeah, had Shaq. Think you had camp was Kareem. Great. Yeah, you had Shaq, Kareem. Walton, you had Worthy, you had uh, uh, let's see, Elijah Wan, you had Pippen, you had X Man, you had um, um, oh Duckworth, you had Steve Johnson, you had Dale Ellis, just name them, they mm. all came, and um, great wow. camp. I mean, it was like it'll never happen again. Nobody will ever send to have the best players in the world come and participate, and he didn't charge a single cent. I mean, it was in Hawaii. It was in um, like L.A. when it was really hot, and then Hawaii. But then as he started getting older, he needed more help. But um, mm. when he was young, well, well, let me say this. When he first started working with me, he put us through it, I'm telling you. But all of us became pretty good players um, and from, well, from now, either being bench work. Say that again? No, I'm sorry. I, I – um... Before we go, I want you to talk about your book. Okay. Well, the book is number 2020. My name of the book is 2020, The Kermit Washington Story. It took us two years to write it. It's 600 pages. 
and it has, you know, they have different things from um, chapters from John Thompson, Jerry West, Seth Sanders, John Havlicek. I don't know if people know, remember Ernie DiGregorio. They have, Ernie D. Um, just go on and on. Who? Yeah, Ernie D. He was my teammate with the Lakers and the Clippers. No, Lakers and Celtics, yeah. And you have all these mm-hmm. guys, but it talks about my whole life. It talks about from beginning to where I am right now. And um, you can get it at Barnes & Noble. You can get it at um, Amazon. And um, okay. if, if you hit me on Facebook, I don't have, you know, I have no more room on Facebook for people. But if you hit me up, I can, you know, I can talk to you about it. Or they can go to my, um, gosh, they can go to my website, um, projectcontactafrica.org. Project, no, projectcontact.org. I don't know if you can write that down, projectcontact.org, and you can see everything I've done or leave me a message or something like that. Or go on Facebook with Project Contact and um, with Summit Washington, and then you can leave me a message there. But, no, no, everything's going good. I mean, I, I've had some problems with um, a gentleman stealing the identity of Project Contact Africa, which gives me a headache, but we'll take care of hmm. that. But that's, that's part of life. That's part of life. But, you know, your project – uh, contact Africa. You do a lot of charity work where you help a lot of less fortunate people in Africa and Rwanda and Nairobi. And I was that blew me away. You could tell my audience uh, we have like two minutes left. You could tell my audience about that. Well, I was in. I went 1994. I went to Rwanda doing the massacre with a um, and worked in a refugee camp in Rwanda and Goma Zaire. And um, from there, you had hundreds of thousands of people who have been killed, maybe 900,000. So after that, basically, I said, I've got to help these people. So I've been to Africa 35 times. I've built Mm. a clinic. Right now, I have 50 kids. Me and another lady, we sponsor for school every month. We've done that for 11 years. We've built a clinic. We have a feeding program. I worked with the NBA. We fed over a million kids over there. Um, I have three families I take care of fully. Um, that's 13 people. So the book is important because the book will help me work and pay for um, everything that's going on in Africa. I mean, so that's a lifesaver. I'm glad the book is done. I hope people pick it up. And I th- I'm sure they'll find it interesting because it's a more of a motivational book because I tell people right away that um, I didn't really play high school basketball to my senior year. A lot of those games I never even got in. I didn't wow. do any schoolwork to my junior. I didn't do any schoolwork to my junior year, and I graduated from college um, with honors and NCAA postgraduate scholarship. So things can happen if you work hard, and that's one thing sports did for me. It showed me by working hard you can overcome a lot of um, a lot of things. Listen, now I have to let you go. You definitely overcame a lot of things, and you did a terrific job with that. And it has been such an honor to have you on my show. <laughs> 